Hello, it's me again, Dr. Bruno Superata, your PMNR Sherpa to the mountaintop of PMNR superstardom. What's next? Case number two. Dr. Bruno will make you a PMNR superstar. A 73-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension was found to have a hemorrhagic stroke. On CT imaging, blood was found to be tracking down the salsi. Salci? Salsi? Confirmed. It's salsi. Salsi it is in contours of the brain. Also known as ventricular dilatation. On physical exam, the patient had meiosis and downward eye deviation. What treatment is most appropriate? Is it an extraventricular drain, oral nemotipine, or oral phenytoin? So let's think about the type of bleed we have here. One that's tracking down into the salsi and contours of the brain like little spiders crawling into the dark. Ah, like subarachnoid hemorrhage. That's right, a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And what commonly produces these kind of bleeds? A berry aneurysm? <laughs> and what artery is most commonly infected with berry aneurysms? The anterior cerebral artery. That's right. How do we remember all this? Easy. Just remember the three A's. Berry aneurysms affect the anterior cerebral artery and cause subarachnoid hemorrhages. My relationship with subarachnoid hemorrhages? It's complicated. Let's talk about complications. Well, complications from subarachnoid hemorrhages can be numerous, but three to be considered are seizures, cerebral vasospasms, and of course, hydrocephalus. So even though the risk in our patient for seizures might be there, routine seizure prophylaxis after stroke, whether hemorrhagic or ischemic, is not generally recommended, not even with oral phenytoin. Cerebral vasospasms are a scary and unfortunately common complication after subarachnoid hemorrhages. For this condition, we'd expect further neurological deficits. And to treat it, we would give them oral nemotipine. And finally, hydrocephalus. Now our patient clearly has the ventricular dilatation and clinical signs of elevated intracranial pressure that we would expect with somebody who has hydrocephalus. So let's get him that extra ventricular drain that he needs. Bonus round! Look, hemorrhagic strokes might not be as common as ischemic strokes, but they carry 50% of the mortality and morbidity of all strokes. Whoa! So what heightens the risk for mortality in these patients? How about larger bleeds or older age, lower Glasgow Coma Scale scores, and deep or infratentorial bleeds? Now, I don't want you to get high blood pressure, but we should talk about hypertension. Why? Because it's ultra common. What types of strokes are typically associated with hypertension? That's right, lacunar strokes. And we'd expect findings somewhere in the pons, the cerebellum, the basal ganglia, the thalamus. But what about hypotension? Hmm, so low blood pressure probably could cause issues at, yes, the border zones. You gotta think watershed infarcts from, uh, Cardiac surgeries? Wait, what? Cardiac surgeries can cause watershed infarcts? Ugh. Heartbreaking. And that's it. We solved another one. If you guys like these, please subscribe below, and we'll see each other next time. Good work!